Hey guys, I'm back. Uh, it's been a few days, but um, I would like to do actually something a little bit different. Um, instead of just doing a review on one specific monster, I think I want to go through uh, most of the basic 2-star and 3-star monsters that a lot of people don't know about or aren't really sure of. Because there are a few monsters that are really useful for early game and even you know later on in the game. Uh, there are some monsters that I still use that are natural born two stars and three star monsters. So, so think of this as a kind of like a beginner's guide on what monsters to build up and where you want to really start. So basically, when you start out the game, you're gonna start out with a fire hellhound, a water fairy, and a wind vagabond. So of these three monsters, basically the ones you, well for now you're going to get uh, you're going to want to keep all of them, but the main ones that you want to focus on are the fire hellhound and the water fairy, uh, mostly because well they're going to be used um, more late game, uh, so they'll stick with you longer than that uh, wind vagabond, which will probably be replaced in a few days of gameplay, so. This guy, why is he good? Well, when you awaken him, which um, might take you some time if you're just starting out, uh, this you know this buff for your uh, ally monsters can really help, especially with that attack power buff. Um, honestly, when I just started out, you know, months and months and months ago, um, this buff I remember it being very very useful, and. The Water Fairy, of course, is a really good healer for early game. Um, if you do manage to get something else like, like a Water Hell, then uh, you're pretty much, you know, this one's better since it's, um, where is it? Basically, it has a ally heal, so it's all of your team instead of just, you know, just the single target fairy. So we'll, we'll go through, and then uh, I'll go through which monsters you'll want to keep. Uh, since when you start out in the game for the first few days, you're probably not going to get anything good. You know, chances are you're going to get, you know, all natural born three-star monsters or two-star monsters or even some one-star fodders. So these are the monsters that you're going to want to keep, uh, keep, hold on to, work on, or ditch. So going through the list, um, everything is pretty much trash on the fire section up until you get to something let's say like uh, fire yeti probably not good early game since you really need uh, you know when you awaken him his third skill is useful you know it can be useful you can make him really good with the right runes but early game you can't really do that because you need really good runes so the first monster you will, that you'll want to focus on is the fire hellhound and you get him right off the bat, so that's pretty much your set right there. You want to focus a lot of attack on him and speed. You know, he's got high speed for a two-star monster already. And uh, he's not even, you know, he's just natural born two-star right here, and he has 109 speed. So you can imagine when you get to, you know, higher levels, he'll have more speed. So um, he's the first one, you know, you get that you want to focus on. And when you get some more two-star monsters, they can really help, you know, this elemental can help a little bit. Um, Fire Harpoo, you'll want to hold on for the Wind Dungeon, since she can block HP recovery. And that's very useful. Uh, I know a lot of uh, high-tier players that use her still. Um, I tend to just nuke the boss and kill it before it can even heal. But uh, if, you, if you can't manage to do that, you can use this. It's it's actually a little bit more reliable than just nuking the boss because sometimes, you know, you don't get a critical hit and then you don't, you know, do it as much and then they heal and then you have to start the process over again, which isn't a problem. Uh, it's not really a problem, but it takes some time. So, you know, starting out, she's very very useful um, for wind dungeon and for some other dungeons um, or scenario mode that you'd need this HP. Uh, block. Um, then pretty much everything else isn't really good. Um, Fire Fairy can be useful early game, early early game uh, as an attack monster. Uh, is a really yeah pretty decent um, AOE debuff attack. 
This one's not too bad. Um, yeah, so you can use her too. Um, some of these other monsters that I would not recommend using would be the Fire Salamander. Uh, just, no, don't even bother, If even if you're just starting out. Now, the Fire Inugami, if you do manage to pull one of these, you are really lucky. Um, if you can't and you're over at Feymon, um, if you can farm the first level of Feymon normal, if you just keep farming that, you'll want to get this monster. He'll drop as one of like the treasure items. Uh, you really want to get this monster. He makes your life so much easier. I still use him. Um, I got him up to 5 star. And um, just work on him, you know. His his attacks are very useful. This is the attack, that, uh, the passive that makes him really useful. If you kill the enemy, you get an extra turn. So basically, if you can get really high attack, he can make, you know, farming XP for your fodder monsters or even for your main monsters, you know, very easily, you know. He'll go through different levels lightning fast because he'll just, he'll go, he has high enough attack, uh, attack to kill the first monster, and then he'll keep going and going and going, and he'll just take out the entire team. And if he if he goes first, then um, he's basically just going to be doing all the attacks, just taking out everyone all the way up to the very end, and then, you know, by the time you get to the end, all the monsters are dead, and, you know, you've already gotten a ton of XP for those monsters that just sat there and did uh, nothing, so, no. And, um, so he's very useful. If you get one, keep him. The fire one, okay? Uh, the other ones, uh, I'll talk about them. They're not as useful, but they're okay. Fire serpent, I've noticed the fire serpent has been... Mm, I'm not a big fan of the fire serpent. Um, it can be annoying, you know, very, very, very um, strong, like 5 star, 6 star with the right runes. It can be kind of annoying. But not very, uh, not very useful. Um, I wouldn't bother with the um, golem as well. I've seen some people make him pretty annoying. But again, you really just want to focus on getting attack and uh, team-based monsters. You know, ones that will heal you and give you buffs. You don't want to focus on these tanks just yet because it's kind of hard to work on tanks when you don't, you, when you can't get the right runes, and then. Then you have the problem of, you know, taking up a space to absorb damage, and so you shouldn't bother about that right now. Um, Fire Griffin, I've seen be, you know, somewhat useful uh, with these, uh, this AoE debuff. And then, um, yeah, I mean, it's okay, but I wouldn't focus on it either. Now, this is one of the other uh, monsters that you will want to get. So, basically, he has... Um, Two AOE attacks, and very, very useful. Um, leader skill can help you with Saic, you know, but uh, mostly you just want the Inferno for his AOE attacks. Can land a lot of continuous damage, um, I believe. He gets the continuous damage with his third skill. Yep. So that's that's very good. And uh, these will these are these this will really help you out early game. This monster, if you get it, keep it. If you're early game, mid game, um, it's still good. It's actually still good to keep. Uh, fire monster, uh, the fire high ele elemental, ignores the defense, so that actually could be really useful. Um, I know some more high tier players that uh, that use her. Uh, the only good ones though are the water, the fire, and the light. Uh, mainly the fire and the light. Um, just because that ignored defense. And then skipping through uh, the werewolf, it can be okay um, with its passive. It's it's no Camilla or anything like that, or Chow, where you heal every turn with a large amount, you know, but, you know, that 10% HP can really help. Um, so if you get one, hold on to it. It also has a good main attack where it disturbs the uh, HP recovery. Um, and, you know, it doesn't have bad attacks, but this one will make it, you know, really survivable. And if you do get one, you can hold on to it, awaken it, and then very, very, you know, later down the road, you can use it for fusion. So, you know, that's a good deal. The Fire Viking's not very useful anymore, so um, you could use it, but I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, not extremely useful anymore. Um, I know, again, I ditched mine. A lot of other, you know, higher tier players ditched their uh, Fire Vikings as soon as the update came for Giants and Dragons, so... Now, this one is, I think, is pretty underrated, actually. The Amazon's not bad, um, for attack, that is. Uh, 
you know, this this main attack is pretty good if you can get you know higher crit damage, which is pretty difficult if you're beginning. But you know, this is not a bad monster to start out with. That's definitely better than some of the other monsters that you could have gotten. So if you do start out, I would focus on her and get her you know leveled up enough to get you into your like into the 30s, 20, like high 20s, and then that's when you want to start focusing on other monsters. Um, pretty much after her, it would be the Fire Magical Archer, definitely better than the Amazon. Uh, has an AoE attack with continuous damage, which is very useful. And then another AoE. So the Fire Magical Archer, you know, very useful. Um, I'm not sure if she's fusion. I believe she, uh, I don't believe she is actually. She might be. So, yeah, she's fusion. So uh, hold on to her. Where was the other one? Yeah, okay, so both this monster, the Fire Werewolf, and the Fire Magical Archer are fusion for JoJo, which is not a bad monster. So, you know, keep keep them both if you get them. But it's a good AoE attack monster, useful for secret dungeons. Um, not very useful. Um, this one's not bad, you know, more continuous damage that you can use. Um, other than that, the only uh, useful monster next would be the Fire Grim Reaper. Again, two AoE attacks, very similar to the Inferno, but this one has heal block and continuous damage. So, you know, I, I, I could, you know, I would recommend using this if you got it early game, uh, but once you get later game, eh, not as reliable. It can be useful for secret dungeons, but you will get more, uh, you will later down the road get better monsters for secret dungeons but can be useful and then that's pretty much it one of my friends actually got the fire beast hunter uh, she just started out um you know it's okay i uh, keep it since you know it's better than nothing once you're starting out in like in like the 10s to 20s but um it's not exactly the best but it can be uh, good as an attack monster single target for some of the um, boss fights, uh, especially because it can ignore defense with a 15% chance. So, you know, you have a less chance of getting a glancing hit, which can be useful all around for water dungeons for this guy. Um, and then this can be useful with that debuff where it prevents them from using the skills that have cool times. But other than that, uh, not very many good fire monsters, mostly just the AoE attack monsters that you want to, you know, watch out for, that you want to keep. And then once we get into water, there's even less attack monsters and a lot more support monsters. So I'm going to go through the monsters that you should focus on for support. So going through here, we go all the way through, uh, and then we get to, this is the first useful one. This can be a really good attack one since it has a group hunt. But once you, you know, the fire one's definitely better, so I would use this as EVA material as soon as you start getting more attack monsters and then level up that fire hellhound. Um, other than that, the next one is the water Garuda. Keep it. It has a pretty good heal uh, when you awaken it. Uh, the piece, the um, it's a third skill. I'll just show you the awakened version. Uh, very useful for fire and dark dungeon um, and for some other um, scenario. Uh, levels so keep this one has a good attack here uh, good buff here it basically makes you know the person that you use it on attack next pretty much um, you also get the light Garuda which is I will go into when I get down to the light monsters but uh definitely use this you know you're gonna be wanting this and leveling it up don't don't wait too long to use this because uh, you'll you'll regret it and you'll be far behind in the fire hall compared to the other uh, halls that you're in. And then everything else pretty much yeah, water hell very good healer that you can use. Uh, those are the hands. I thought that was like a mustache. <laughs> I never noticed that. All right. Um, well, the water hell has a very good AOE uh, heal, and then this one. So, very good healer. I would definitely use it, you know. Uh, I don't have one built just because I don't really need one. I have Amon that I'm building up to 100% crit rate. I believe I'm at like 90, 
percent right now, and I need to get some HP on him. But um, yeah, not a, not a bad monster uh, for early game. Better than the the fairy, in my opinion, if you can level this up and uh, awaken it and everything. Um, some of these three stars, mostly you're just using them to take a spot and put some attack on them, at least. This one can be a little bit useful. You'll notice that she is very annoying in the um, the ice, I forgot the mountain name in the scenario. Uh, let's check it, actually. It is this one, Mount White Ragone. Uh, she's very annoying on that one for low levels. Uh, yeah, you will you will hate her. <laughs> Trust me. Um, the war bear can be useful for surviving um, with the pass or the uh, passive that you get. Basically revives itself when it dies. Um, so then, um, I don't know if it has a cooldown. Let's see. Yeah, see, it's only going to be used really once because. By the time you're gonna die again, this cooldown won't won't have uh, been used unless you've got a really fast team. Uh, so it's probably pretty much like a one-time thing um, for the most part. Uh, this can be useful in arena, um, just because you you know low levels probably don't have this passive yet. You you might ha get the chance of getting one of these in the very first um, set of uh, scenario mode levels, which is uh, Feymon. Was it? Man, I always forget these. Uh, oh, it's Garen. Yeah. Feymon Volcano. I don't know why I said that. It's uh, Garen Forest. I always forget the names of these scenario uh, modes because I just don't I don't go do them anymore except the new ones and Feymon Volcano. But, um, but yeah. So the Inigami... Uh, the water one is okay, not as good as the fire, but the passive can help you. And the group hunt um, is pretty powerful. It can be. Um, and the uh, counter attack will go down to the awakened version. In my experience, I never really find useful uh, use for it. But um, you know, it's not too bad. I mean, it's not used as much. Like, but. You know, it can help for bosses, for the uh, for the bosses. Uh, but I wouldn't ditch it just yet because of that passive. Water Golem again. I've seen people use it for its passive, but I don't really think you should be focusing on a tank right now if you're just starting out. You know, if you're not if you're not up in the high 30s, chances are you don't have very many good monsters. Maybe a few four stars, but. Uh, not really the ones that you want, you know, once you get into like the high 30s, mid 30s, up until, you know, level 40, that's when you start really getting your good monsters, not by, not by like, you know, you drop better stuff when you're higher leveled, it's just, you've been playing longer, better chance of getting stuff, you know, there are people that get 5 star, 4 star monsters at like level 8, which is uh, pretty disappointing for some, but uh, since they really want those monsters and can't get them to level 40, but, you know, once you start getting higher level, you'll get better mon monsters, and then you can really replace these. Um, and most of these water monsters are kind of, eh. You know, this one's not bad with the uh, attack bar increase and then the critical rate. It was very useful for giants, but no longer is it useful since giants got changed. The water again, the water one again um, ignores defense, but not as good as the fire one, in my opinion, just for the, the actual third uh, skill. Uh, and then pretty much the next one is this one. This one can be useful. I've seen a lot of people use this uh, because of this attack speed increase and the HP heal um, for the uh, for all of the allies. And then this one, this decreased enemy defense is pretty useful actually. Never used the water werewolf, but I've seen it uh, work. And then of course it has a main attack where it disturbs the HP recovery, which is okay. Um, and then pretty much after that, um, you know, Water Amazon, same thing with the AoE, Cassandra, not as much. Now, uh, this one is okay, uh, attack bar increase and attack speed. Uh, but I find the, I find Bernard to be better. Um, you know, just because Bernard also has the, um, attack and defense debuff on the enemy so that's why i think bernard's better but the water bounty hunter i've seen 
been uh, being used by high level players. So you can think about that. Imp champions are always good for low, you know, low level. They've got good attack. Megan, you're gonna be using her for arena for uh, probably for quite a while uh, up until you're moving out of the speed teams. I forgot to mention Rena, this water up camp priest. Uh, I mean, if you get her, she'll be a good healer for you since she's a tank as well. But once you start getting up into like later game, I wouldn't even bother with her. I've I've had no trouble with her in arena. Just takes she's just annoying and takes a while to kill, but she's not any trouble at all. So she doesn't really pose a threat. And whenever I see one in arena, it's basically like a free free pass, uh, just because it's like three monsters and then just one, you know, spot filled by some tank that just takes a while to kill so i mean it can annoy the you know the enemies into not attacking you but i don't think it will ever do that um when you start getting higher level but uh she can she can be a healer for early game so don't just miss her right away but once you start moving into like the level 30s you won't need her uh in my opinion i don't see her used often when you start getting to the higher arena ranks uh, and when I do, I usually just attack and take her out. So the Dr Water Dragon Master is a decent healer, um, but uh, not the best, and I wouldn't really focus on it. And basically, the rest of the three stars are meh. Uh, this Water Beast Hunter, if you get it, you don't you know? I I wouldn't throw it away either. This passive can really help. Uh, so it'll be a really good single target heavy hitter uh, for your low level and then um, and if you guys are wondering about the four stars I will go more in depth for those in other videos like you guys have seen um, It's just kind of hard to cover everything. Um, I'm just going quickly through all the three star monsters So wind in my opinion contains the best monsters in the entire game from three to four star five stars uh, I would say have to go to the water um but the wind definitely from two to two to four stars contain the best. Now these are I'm gonna go through all of the monsters that you should keep if you get one. Uh, boom! Wind imp, uh, wind imp can help you with attack early game. You know has a good third skill that uh, really hits hard. Um, wind pixie, very good monster. I use her. This is one of the monsters that one of the two star monsters that I use pretty frequently actually. Um, for Giants B10, I use her, and uh, some other instances uh, I use her. Rakaja, the Wind Yeti, I use him for Giants B10. A good healer, I would keep him if you get him. He serves as a good healer. Um, uh, not really. Ramagos, the Wind War Bear, with his crouch and his clean shot, he can be a really hard hitter hitting up to 30,000 depending on how much HP you put on him so keep him definitely keep him wind elemental very very useful if you need that con uh, those continuous uh, damage effects so if you really need the continuous damage in your higher level you can build one of these up and I wouldn't recommend like a wind Viking or a wind lizardman I would really recommend doing this wind elemental you know he may be two star and the others are three stars but you know, make him not squishy, and he'll be throwing continuous damage pretty frequently. Uh, then we move forward, and we get all the way down to... Now, I've seen the Wind Serpent used. I haven't checked its skills out. Okay, so this is basically used for uh, against fire teams, um, because it reduces the da uh, damage by fire attribute by 50%. If you're starting out, just starting out, don't e I wouldn't even bother with the... Wind Serpent, but if you're higher level, I could see this being useful in Arena against, you know, really strong fire teams, because fire teams are pretty uncommon, um, just because all of the good monsters are, you know, they tend to be in the wind section. But um, then the next one is the Wind Griffin, another, you know, one of my Giants B10 monsters, uh, good attack speed, um, ally buff, and then this is the debuff. And then it has uh, just some normal attack. So these two uh, buffs and the debuff, uh, they are very useful actually. So keep it. You know, very. You know, if you manage to get one, keep it. If you can't get one, go into the desert and um, 
start farming for one of those. You can check the reward, uh, the rewards, like the monsters that you can possibly get. You know, just like how you can get the Fire Nagami from Famon Volcano, you can get the Wind Griffin from the desert. Um, I'll, I'll, you know, I'm gonna check the name just to make sure you guys know. It's Tamor Desert. So, right there, Wind Griffin. So make sure, make sure you get one as soon as you can, and then I'll show you guys Famon. Boom, Fire Nagami. So. Try to try get one of those. And then we move on. Now notice how high, the Wind High element, uh, Elemental doesn't have the Ignore Defense. So she's basically trash. Um, and then... Now... Oh, Wind Epic Camp Priest. Good, good Reviver. You know, a lot of people think she's bad. I think she's very good. Um, she's pretty reliable, uh, for one. She elongates buffs, so she can do very well with, you know, like, Chloe or, um, so right here, it elongates the harmful effect, um, the recovery, or, I'm sorry, it elongates the beneficial effects and, uh, shortens the harmful effects, yeah, and it heals. So, um, and it, it recovers the HP of all allies, so, Michelle is... Very de uh, very good, um, especially for arena when you're running high high t uh, tier teams. You're gonna want to use like a double revive team or a team that can really survive, and Michelle will help you out. You know, so if you get one of these, don't ditch her. You know, she's not maybe not as good as Chloe, but she can be useful. And a lot of people really overlook that. So I think you know if you get one, just hold on to it and work on it slowly because uh, she will help you. Um, maybe not now, but in the future. The wind magical archer. Check that. Check that passive out. You know. So this can be a really hard hitting monster for you. So I would I would definitely hold on to it if you get one. Um, she's very good for single attack, comparable to the light magical archer, but probably not as good. Um, then we move on. Uh, this one, if you're low level, can be a decent. AoE attack, but not when you get higher level. And then we keep going through. Copper can be useful, but you need the right runes. He's one of those ignore defense monsters, but only if he has really, really, really high defense. So maybe not for early game, but for mid game and high late, later game, you know, can be useful. This is the best drunken master in my opinion. Good, uh, good heal. And then um, this is a debuff attack, but um, debuff and um, buff attack, but uh, none of the Drunken Masters are very good, so this is the one that uh, inflicts continuous damage, but I personally think the Elemental is a better one. The Beast Hunter, this one, I think can be very useful. Um, so if you get a Wind Beast Hunter, I would keep it. Um, I mean, I could explain why, but there's just a ton of information in these skills, um, but, you know, both of the both of the uh, attacks, the secondary attacks, I find very useful. And then of course all of the four star monsters, you know, the Wind Undyne, Sylph, Sylphid, Joker, Ninja, um, Kyriet to the extent, uh, an extent uh, the Phantom Thief, the Rakshasa, the Death Knight, the Lich to a certain extent, the Samurai, the Brownie Magician, the Cobalt Bomber, and even the Sky Dancer. The Sky Dancer is a, a really good healer. Uh, I was told it was the best one in the game. Not sure because I don't have one, but uh, I could believe it since it heals and it does. It ignores the, the, um, uh, the what was it? The heal block, since it's technically a. Um, this one is technically a balancing, which doesn't require anything that deals with the heal block. So it heals you. Um, heals the allies. Or I'm sorry, he heals the targeted ally uh, and ignores the the um, the heal block. So, but that's that's for another story. And even the wind towers is told to be good. So, oh. so yeah, a lot of good wind monsters. So, so now you won't get many light monsters, but I'll tell you which ones you should try to get. Uh, Neil. She can be very useful, the, the Light Fairy. Um, 
the uh, light Gerda, you'll get him as your healer. The, the light of recovery can be useful, but you, sh you know I would replace it with the wind Epicion priest. Uh, I fed mine. I uh, don't really use it anymore, so but I would keep it. Boom, light and Nagami, That's one that you'd want. Uh, you won't ever get the light golem, so don't bother. <laughs> but if you do, then you're lucky. Um, light bear man, very good, very 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 good healer. Um, more late game though. Usually, actually, act, like 99% of the time, you're gonna be using him for late game. And then the light vagabond, you will want to keep. And I'm just, these are just all the farmable monsters, you know. I like some of these other monsters, like the Grim Reaper, the Mystic Witch, the Living Armor, Fami, if you bought her, um, and some of these other monsters. You know, they're 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 good. They're good light monsters, but chances are you won't ever get them. So those are those are some of the farmable monsters that you want to get. The I'll go back through: Inagami, Neil, Bear Man, and Vagabond. And uh, yeah, so those are the light monsters that you will want to farm from the secret dungeons. And then the dark ones, Dark Salamander uh, has a pretty decent. Um, the corrupt armor passive does additional damage according to the enemy's HP, which is very useful for the water dungeon. But that's about it. So if you're having uh, trouble with that, the Dark Salamander will help you. Um, not a farmable monster, but very good. You know, if you get one, use it. Same with the Hellhound. I think the Hellhound is farmable. Mm, excuse me. <clears throat> um, so, the Dark Hellhound is not bad. The Dark Inagami is pretty decent. Um, you know, I've seen some people use them. Not as much, but useful. Uh, dark Golem, very useful. The Light and the Dark Golems are like pretty much the only good Golems, in my opinion. Um, then that's about it for the light or for the dark. Uh, okay, so the Mystic Witch, the Dark Mystic Witch is pretty decent, and the Dark Living Armor is also good. Two AoE attacks, um, can be uh, very useful as a tank. Uh, but other than that, the rest of the monsters are pretty trashy for the three star dark monsters that you will never probably use, but. Some the ones that I mentioned aren't too bad. So and then if you ever get a four star light or dark monster, even if it sucks, just keep on uh, hold on to it. There's no reason to feed it because I mean, you're most likely you're never ever gonna get another one of those. You know, chances are. So might as well keep it. You know, just for props or even you know if they buff it in the future. A lot of people got rid of monsters that they should have kept. Um, yeah, I can't really say they should have because they sucked. Uh, example being the Water Death Knight, but um, they actually recently buffed the you know, a lot of monsters, and one of them being the Water Death Knight. So this uh, skill now, you know, it it's not the trashy just protects all allies from death for one turn. It's actually it removes harmful effects and gains immunity. So that's useful if you don't have a monster like the Wind Undying that grants immunity. So, uh, yeah, so if you're just starting out, I know a lot of this information can be overwhelming and confusing, but the mentions I'm, uh, the monsters I mentioned are very, very useful. Keep, you know, keep true to the list of monsters that I just gave you, because these monsters, you're going to be using them for quite a while. Uh, not that one. Um, but these monsters, you're going to be using them for quite a while, you know. If you, if you kind of go off the track and start using monsters like, you know, the ones that I didn't mention, like the Fire Howl or Fire Bear Man, you're going to find yourself struggling a little bit because they're not very good. So that's pretty much it. Um, you know, a lot of the beginning uh, begin game is just finding out what fits you and which monsters you like, you know, both looks and for skills. Um, you know, because it's a game and you're supposed to have fun. So, you know, why not get monsters that you think look cool? I mean, that's pretty much the reason why I fused Katarina. Um, so... If you're, you know, since you're just starting out, most likely, uh, if you're watching this video for this long, um, I would, I'd really focus on getting the monsters that I listed. And I know there's a long list, but uh, you can always come back and double check. And if you do manage to get a good monster from an unknown scroll, or even get, you know, Crystal Summon, um, come back here and uh, double check with the list. And if you did get a good monster, then uh, use it and level it up, because it will help you. 
So hopefully that helped you guys for those that are starting out or even in mid game. If you're a lot higher level, then you probably didn't get as much in you know useful information. But um, you know if you're really struggling to get good monsters, get some of the ones that I mentioned, and you'll see an improvement in your gameplay. Especially for you know the giants keep the ones that I mentioned for giants B10, they're pretty much essential um, if you don't have high top tier monsters. So on that note, I will leave you guys to continue playing, and uh, hopefully you guys got some useful information out of this. And I will see you guys next time.